How's it going, everyone? We're back and we're going to be going over crafting in Undecember this time. Or, well, enchanting as they call it, but it's crafting. All right, and you can access this from any of the blacksmiths in any of the towns at any time. Now, there's a lot of information to go over here, so I'm going to try to be as clear and concise as I can and break it up into segments. I'll have um, timestamps in the video as well, so you can find specific sections that you want to get to or refer back to at any time. And as always, if something I say confuses you or it's not clear or you still have questions after this video, do not hesitate to drop into our live stream uh, when we're live on Twitch and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions there or even provide an example. Now, getting into it, I want to preface this by saying that I think crafting is one of the most important parts of this game and it is going to be a key part of what you're doing when you're going through the first 10 acts of the game because you should be changing your resistances on your gear at every act in order to accommodate that boss's specific element type. All right, looking at you, chaos people taking on the final boss in act 10 with no chaos resistance. You're going to need that. Okay. <laughs> um, but even then, once you get into mapping and you, you know, you're going through those early stages of mapping and getting to higher maps and you're trying to get more character power, um, you're going to be looking to do this through crafting because drops are not going to be super reliable in what you get and you can't rely on what's posted on the auction house because a lot of people still don't know what's good and what's bad and you know some people are just posting stuff that's not even identified or has any properties you know shown and so you know it, it's it can be you know you don't you don't want to buy something that you're not sure is good for you okay um, and so crafting is a really good way right now before we you know start getting legendary gear that's getting posted as well and whatnot um, but let's go from there and we're going to first talk about the types of gear and their prefixes and suffixes and how many they can have. And then after that, uh, we'll talk about all the crafting materials because in order for you to understand the crafting materials, you got to understand the pieces of gear and the certain elements around them. Okay. Now I'm going to start here with a base piece of gear. Okay. It is a normal quality piece of gear. A normal quality piece of gear will not have any property modifiers on them unless they have a specific implicit modifier here, like this sword does, which is plus 250 attack rate. If you look at this one-handed axe, this one does not have any implicit modifiers on it, so it doesn't have any extra things to it. But this sword does, and so this is actually a nice extra uh, modifier to have on here. Right, so normally a piece of gear could have a max of six modifiers on it when it's at uh, rare quality, but if there's an implicit on it, it's like having a seventh roll for it, okay? Now, these are important to keep in mind when looking at your gear because they can have things like percent HP increase or crit damage increase or area damage or percent damage to stun targets, and that's, you know, can be important if you're going to stun build or something. So these are things to keep in mind when you're looking at your gear, okay? So again, these will not have any modifiers on them other than those uh, implicit modifiers. Also, normal gear is the only time you can affect the percentage quality of a piece of gear. Once you make it magic quality, or rare quality, you cannot change the uh, uh, percentage of it for its quality unless there is a very specific legendary material but we're going to talk about that later because there's a very specific situation in which you should be using it. You should never be using it uh, very willy nilly like the normal quality uh, increase for it. Okay. Now a magic quality piece of gear. I'm going to use a birth essence real quick to make this a magic quality. Okay. We'll have anywhere from one to three properties available to it. Three being the absolute max. Okay. And that's going to have... Um, it can roll all three as prefixes, or it could roll all three as suffixes, okay? A m rare quality piece of gear can have anywhere from four to six, six being the max, unless it has an implicit, and that's basically a seventh again, okay? Now, I mentioned prefixes and suffixes because you can only have a max of three prefixes and a max of three suffixes. And what the prefixes and suffixes are, are the properties that can roll here. And how you determine what is a prefix and what is a suffix when you see it on a piece of gear. So let's say this axe dropped in the wild and we looted it like this, which would be insane. Okay. 
In order to know which modifiers are the prefixes and which ones are the suffixes, you can note that the ones that have this lining on the top of them pointing upward, okay, the up little up arrow, we call it an up arrow, um, with the, the line curvature here on the top filled in, these are prefixes, okay? The ones down here have a down arrow on them, okay, going underneath, and those are the suffixes, all right? They're very small and difficult to tell. And, you know, normally you could just say, oh, well, the numbers on top are the prefixes and the numbers on bottom are the suffixes. Great. That only works if it's a six property piece, because then it's very clear which three are what, um, because it will always put the prefixes on top and it will put the suffixes on bottom. But if you have a piece of gear that has only, say, um, four slots on it, three of those slots could be suffixes and one of those slots could be a prefix. So if you go to craft on it, thinking that you've got more suffixes you can hit, you can't, all right, or add to it. You know, if you go to add slots to it, right? And you, you, know, you go to add that fifth slot or that sixth slot to it. None of those slots that you're adding can roll a suffix because it's already at its max suffix count. So that's something to keep in mind when looking at the prefixes and suffixes and how they work, okay? Um, so that's how you're going to be able to determine what's a prefix and a suffix. And in order for you to tell what prefix and suffix an item can have between your armor, okay, or weapons, is when you put it here, register it into the crafting section, this option chance here next to the enchant button, if you click on it, it will show you, okay, what is a prefix and what is a suffix as well. All right, and these are all the options that can be on this armor piece, as well as the percentage chance in which it could roll those, okay? So if I were to try to craft on this right now, I would have a even 4.35 chance to get any of these options here, <laughs> all right? That's pretty nice, actually. And then if this was a legendary piece of gear, this shows you that these are the extra legendary options, legendary prefixes and suffixes, that can be rolled, um, but we don't have legendary gear yet. It hasn't been showing up yet, but those will have additional options as well to them, okay? Now, there is even more going on with some rare gear. I'm sure some of you have been seeing this gear with this nice glowy effect around it and these glowing options here, okay? These pieces of gear will have an additional effect as well and that includes if they have their own implicit right so this ring has plus 25 percent barrier that is its own personal implicit okay and then this authority implicit is an additional uh, modifier as well so technically this ring if it had all six slots to it but it only has five okay and we've only revealed four of them okay it could have eight total properties to it all right that's really good. That's the kind of stuff that you're really going to start looking for in the end game with what you're looking for. But there's going to be a specific way to determine what these have as well. Um, and these are going to be related to authorities. Uh, but we're going to talk about authorities separately because the way to find out authorities is a little bit different. If a piece already has an authority on it, you can see what the options are available to that piece. Same way, if you go to the option chance and you scroll through, you will see, well, this one, we already have it, I guess, actually. Oh, wait, we didn't register it. I'm sorry, my mistake. Rookie maneuver, okay? You have to register the piece in there. Go to the option chance, okay? Now you see the prefix and suffix is here, but it's got an additional glowing icon with it. That is what is a particular special prefix or suffix as well down here, the suffix options, these are bonus specific suffix and prefixes that can only be rolled because of the authority piece, uh, the authority effect that is on this piece of gear. And there are different suffixes and prefixes depending on what type of authority it is. That'll be something we talk about later as we go through the crafting materials, okay? So, that's the first stuff to talk about is, you know, being able to determine what's a suffix, what's a prefix, where they come from, how to find them, and what the chances are and what you can roll on them, okay? So those are things to begin to look at when you're doing your crafting, you know, just throw some pieces in there, see what stuff can typically roll. Not everything can roll the same thing, okay? You know, somebody told me, I was like, all right, where can I find mana on kill? And somebody told me, oh, you can find it on your accessories. 
And so I was like, you know, trying to look for it on my accessories. And they're like, oh no, but it's only on amulet. Well, great. I was looking at all my rings. So, you know, not all pieces of gear that are in the same category can have the same things rolled on them. So it's important to be able to uh, know that difference when you're looking for certain rolls uh, when you're doing your crafting. Okay. Now, getting into it to talk about all these different materials now, now that we've talked about the suffixes, prefixes, and all that stuff, it's going to make this a little bit easier to talk about. Okay. Um, Real quickly, one thing I forgot that I do want to mention, okay, um, this is important as well, is these numbers that you see on the suffixes and prefixes too, okay? These are the tier value of your suffix and prefixes, okay? And they can be anywhere from 1 to 10, so long as it's a high enough level piece. If you're in Act 1, you're probably not going to see anything higher than a tier 2 roll, it's literally impossible to see a tier 10 roll. It's not available at that level range of weapons. So you're not going to see high tier rolls until you get to this higher tier gear, right? This is a tier 27 ax. All right. This is the, you know, this is where you're going to start seeing tier 10 effects taking place onto gear. Okay. So keep in mind, this is the tier in which it can roll and it can roll again anywhere from one to 10 for its tier. Okay. Now, into the uh, currencies that are used for crafting, okay? The first one that you saw us use earlier on this sword is the magic upgrade essence. This is going to be the most common essence that you will use the most. Uh, this is how you're going to first craft, you know, into your base effects right there. It can roll uh, randomly. It resets the maximum option count uh, on a piece of gear. And so if it's a normal piece of gear, it'll make it magic and then give it a number of options. If it's already a magic piece, it will re-roll those number of options anywhere from one to three. It is completely random and they might be revealed or they might be, um, uh, still covered, right? And you have to reveal them on your own or you can roll it again. I don't want cold damage. I'm doing a physical build. So I'm going to hit it again. HP on kill. Cool. Let's say we go with the HP on kill for now but we lost one of those spots for it, okay? And we don't like that. So instead we go back to trying to roll it and we're looking to get, you know, three slots again. And we may not get it for a lot of hits. So if you do get three hits, it could be beneficial, but we got it again. Um, and now that we have those three, you can see we still only have this time one revealed, okay? And look, even though this one is on top because it's the only one revealed, it is a suffix option. It's got the down arrow on it. The next piece of currency is the magic birth essence, and this will reimbue the options of a magic item by chance. So we hit this and it will um, re-roll the amount of options or not the amount of options, but re-roll the current options that are shown and it will be anywhere from one to three. So this time it only revealed two. It re-rolled the attack damage and it's going to re-roll everything that's there. All right. And it can go back to one, back to two, back to one, two, two one and you know there we go we got three it's completely random okay little unfortunate but it is random and this is how you know you can roll for trying to get those bases but if you're looking for a very specific base to start off with you can just keep hitting these over and over and over um, you're gonna get a ton of birth essences and so you can just keep rolling these until you get something that you want to use okay Typically, you would use these if you have all three revealed and you want to re-roll all three all at once. If you want to, um, you know, but if you run out of these, it's still good to be able to use your magic upgrade essences as well. Okay. If you're looking to roll a specific prefix or suffix to begin with on a piece of gear, there is a currency that you can use to target one specific suffix or prefix uh, when crafting. Okay, and it is these magic fixed essences, which you can convert 10 magic birth essences into one magic fixed essence at the alchemy table. So if you have a surplus of magic birth essences and you want to craft some specific ones in order to craft specific options, okay, you can do that at the alchemy table, get these, All right? So you'll click on this one, you'll go to the select option that's available here once you select it, and you will see the list of options for the suffixes and prefixes for this weapon and what you want. We're going to go with weapon attack damage, okay? And we're going to hit this enchant right here, okay? 
and it rolled 22 to 23 attack. We don't want that. It's too low for what we want. All right. Rolled there. And then it'll keep re-rolling based on the number of properties that you have here as well. So even if you have all three revealed at the same time, it'll re-roll all three, but it's also going to give you this specific property every time. Okay. So we got a tier seven attack damage. Now we don't have this third slot open. And so we want to get that third slot. Keep in mind, we have one prefix upward arrow, one suffix. So, you know, it's right now 50, 50 on what we get, right? So any odds go, we are going to go here to the magic expansion essence, and this will add a property if there is a missing property count. So if there's only one property listed or two properties listed, you can use the magic expansion essence to add a third property and it will add it at random as well. Okay. Now from here, okay, we got this and we see that it's 27 to 29. You can hit the alt key and you can see what the full ranges are. Ah, 24 to 27 is the possible range for the low end. 29 to 41 is the possible ranges for the high end. This rolled low. This is a very low additional value to it. Okay. We can use the magic change essences here in order to re-imbue the options of the value. And now it's 26 to 36. So we ended up on the low end for the bottom number, but we got a much higher high end number and we even got a higher attack speed out of it. This will not, will not change the tier of the roll, but it will change the range of the values that are available based on what is shown here. Okay. Now, um, actually I think our attack speed went down. I think it was 8.8, <laughs> but, uh, this, this re rolls the options. Now, if you have a piece of gear, we're going to go back and reset this and we're going to roll it until we get a, uh, empty slot. Unfortunately, now it's not doing that for us. Grr. Okay. Right here. We have an unveiled property okay let's say you get two rolls let's say you get a roll that you really like and then you have another empty one here you can use the coins here the magic imbue essences my dog uh the magic imbue essences right here and these will imbue one additional option if you have an empty slot here and fill it in and unfortunately we actually got the percent attack damage which complements flat attack damage quite well so that's really good for us but now we're missing this third option still. So we're going to go back here to the magic expansion essence. Boom. Three properties. Okay. We have one prefix. Okay. And two suffixes. Now, typically we rolled really low on this tier for the attack damage. And I would typically re-roll this a bunch more until I got a higher value to begin with. Okay. But for right now that we're just here to show you how this works and what you can do with it. Now, going into the rare pieces, most of these we don't need to talk about because they are just a rare version of the stuff that we just went over here in the magic uh, quality ones. There are a few specific new crafting mods, however, one of them being here, the random upgrade essence. This will change a normal magic or rare item into a magic rare or unique item. So actually, if we go here to enchant, it will completely re-roll anything you've already done to it. And it can re-roll it into anything, as it shows here. Magic, rare, or unique. So you can even craft uniques, but it will roll anything from any range that is available. And unfortunately, as you can see, magic is very common, but we did get a rare hit here, so it upgraded this to a rare piece. Okay, but it only went to four modifiers this is the lowest possible modifier count on a rare remember so that's not very good that's not great we hit it again it can go from rare back down to magic i don't find that these get used very often i think people primarily just use them to try and hit uniques to be able to sell them on the marketplace or fill in their imbue book i don't particularly like using them other than to do that i don't think they're good for crafting unless you just get insanely lucky uh, but they are there all right so let's say you do this by accident or you end up not getting what you like when you upgrade it to rare. There is a new uh, currency here called a reversion essence. Now keep in mind when you use a reversion essence, it will take a piece all the way back to normal. All right. So we use it 
we're back to a base piece. This is how you're going to reset your gear if you don't end up liking the final options of your craft that you get from your additional suffixes and prefixes when you take it to rare. So we're going to go back here. We're going to roll it. Okay, we've got this open slot here. Use this. Use the expansion. Boom, we're back to three slots, okay? To make a magic piece of gear rare quality guaranteed, you will use the rare upgrade essence and this will upgrade it to rare quality and it will give it anywhere from one to three additional properties. So up to six properties. We're gonna use it. We got five. That's pretty good. Five is a great place to be at. It's a good amount. Ideally you want six though, but you can always add more but these are a bit more rare than the blue ones, so don't use them frivolously, okay? But you see here, we got attack speed, mana, hit rate, crit rate, um, and dot amp. We don't like them. Again, we have the birth essences. We can reroll all the modifiers, but again, now you have even more options, and so there's more things that can be rolled, as well as um, more potential chances for you to get empty uh, roll spots um, that you will have to fill in with the coins here also. Okay. And again, you see the properties, um, that are rolling. So right now this one has two prefixes and two suffixes. So again, it's still 50, 50. If we reveal this one for what we want. Um, so just some things to keep in mind when you are rolling your gear and with what you get. Now, this is an example right here. Okay. We've got a five slot sword. All properties are filled in. We've got one prefix, two prefix, three prefix. So if we add an additional slot right now, because we only have five and we want to make six, it will only be a suffix. Remember this, it can only be a suffix. So don't be here thinking like, oh, okay, I can still get flat attack damage. No, flat attack damage is a prefix option, okay? You cannot get it. You will only get another suffix option. All right. So take a look at the suffixes that are here because these are the only things that you would be able to roll on it. Okay. That is important to remember. Now, a couple of the other new items that are here is a disintegration essence. I haven't actually really used these yet. Um, but what it does is it removes one option from a magic or rare item by complete chance. So you know, there might not be a property on here that you like and you want to try to re-roll it. You can take the gamble and you can use it and it's going to remove one of those properties. Okay. We got lucky. It didn't remove our attack damage or our speed. In fact, it did remove one of our other prefix options. So now if we went back and we wanted to reveal this with a rare imbue essence, because it's a, it's a empty property slot, this could now roll attack damage. Unfortunately, it did not, and we got mana on kill back. It is what it is. That's how it goes. But you do have to be careful because these could roll away something that you do like. There goes our percent attack damage. Now we don't have that. Okay. So that is something to keep in mind. Now here you can see the quality birth essences. This is how you quality gear. You cannot use it if it's already a modified piece of gear, meaning that it's magic or rare or legendary. Okay. These only work when a piece of gear is normal quality. It must be normal quality to re-roll its uh, uh, percent value, okay? And it will roll anywhere from 1 to 20%, 20 being the base max percentage increase, okay? Now, you do see that there's a similar looking quality modification essence here, and this is a legendary essence. It can be used on modified gear, but it can only be used one time, okay? And it will affect the quality anywhere from minus five to plus 10. And it can only be used on gear that is quality 10 or higher. Typically, you would only use this on a piece of gear that is already very high quality, preferably max quality at like 20%, because it can go beyond 20%, all right? It can go up to 30% quality, all right? That is the best case scenario for you to use this, but it can go minus percent. So, you know, it's important that when you're rolling your gear at a base value that you get a good base percentage um, 
when considering using the quality modification essence. In fact, you'd probably want to use this while it's still normal quality even. Um, that way, if it goes minus 5%, you can still use a quality birth essence and you're not wasting a piece of gear that you got rolls on that you really like. It would be really bad to craft a piece, get the rolls you really want, and you go to use this and it goes minus 5%. Then you're like, shit. If I want to quality it back up to 20% or have a chance to, you have to destroy the piece back down to normal quality. So look to do your quality percent rolls before you start crafting on it, ideally, okay? Now, we got a lot of legendary mats here now. These are a bit different, um, or unique mats, sorry. These have uh, reimbused the prefix option of a magic or rare item by chance. So you can use this on a magic or rare item to reimbue one... Um, or reimbue the prefix option. So if you just want to change the prefixes, you would use these. If you just want to change one prefix, remove it. Um, this removes one prefix option from a magic or rare item by complete chance. All right. So be careful. Um, this one will reimbue all of your suffix options. So if you don't like the bottom suffix options, you can reroll all of your suffix options. And this one is one suffix option. Okay. And this will let you reimbue the values of a unique item. This is the only scenario in which you can craft on a unique item. If you do notice, uniques do have ranges as well in which they can roll their values. All right. And so this is the only thing you can use on a unique item is to re-roll its value ranges. Now, everything else here are legendary imbue essences, and these are used for legendary crafting. But now we have these Vespers. These are a bunch of different essences. And you can see we have some here. These are authorities. Okay. These are what we were talking about here. Um, you can craft authorities onto a piece of gear. Okay. And if you want to determine what type of um, authorities can be rolled, depending on which type you use. So if we have an Aquila essence here. Okay. You can click on this, all right? You don't need the gear for it. Um, you can click on this and you can see option chance, all right? And now you can see the unique um, authority options uh, that are available to it, as well as right here. So you can see um, this is a suffix dot percent that we could get as a uh, suffix option. Dot percent increase is one of the suffix options for it. Uh, it does not look like we have a prefix option available for it um, on this piece. So that's something to keep in mind. We can roll in Alyssa's Essence, reimbues the options of rare gear above level 70 by chance and imbues higher tier with a high chance. So this would re-roll the tier values. So it would give us, it would re-roll all of these options and come back with a higher chance of giving us higher tiers than what is here. Okay. Uh, but as you can see, uh, this is what you're going to see for the unique authority. So this, you know, the effect that makes it glow right here, this stuff. This is what would be um, here under the unique authority option. Um, this chess piece would be able to have two potential prefix options with max chaos resist percent and uh, sentry skill rune level and suffix options of decreased critical chance taken, rune knight, freeze immunity, sentry chaos resist all those things. There's a lot of really crazy things that you can actually get from uh, the prefix, uh, the authority options. So it's important if you get any of these authority uh, crafting options that you take a piece of gear of each type, register it in and see what options are available on those pieces of gear to get for prefix or suffixes because you can get really insane modifiers um, if you're seeing people with like plus three skill rune stuff, that is from these authority modifiers. These are crazy things, all right? They do a lot of really awesome stuff and really can amplify your build. My gloves, for example, here, they have uh, plus 10% armor pen. And this special glowing icon, this is uh, indicating that this is one of the special prefix or suffix options that can roll on it. So you know how here you could indicate it by looking at the chart here and seeing this visual effect here, okay? If you get one of those options, it gives an additional special icon for it right here like this. So this means that this is a special authority 
uh, prefix or suffix that is crafted onto this piece of gear. So that's something else to keep in mind as well. So that is going to wrap up all of it. It's a lot of information. I hope I covered all of it. I hope I was clear about things. I, I, you know, I get paranoid about this kind of stuff that I ramble on and, you know, get sidetracked and go off in different directions, but I hope I was able to be clear and concise and in a, you know, direct manner and in a, um, directional manner, just going forward with it and not going back or getting lost or anything and was able to keep it on like a nice path for you all. But, uh, that's going to wrap up essentially the basics and the core elements of how crafting works and what you can do with it. Um, so it's really awesome. I, I enjoy crafting. I think it's a lot of fun being able to, you know, make my own gear better through my own, uh, being without relying on other players or things like that. I've been approaching this game pretty much like it's a solo self-found league for POE. Uh, so I really enjoy doing the crafting in this game because it's all very clear cut direct and how it works and it's all in one location, not through a bunch of different crazy systems. So that's really awesome. Um, thank you all so much for watching, watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe if you like our content and as always take care of yourselves, drink water, stay healthy, have a good one and take care.